black, invisible, and super fast. That's the SR-71 Blackbird, the fastest spy plane ever built. Capable of reaching a maximum cruising speed of 3,560 kilometers per hour, three times the speed of sound, it set records that still stand unbeaten. Thanks to Jacob O'Neill's amazing, and I mean truly amazing, 3D animations, we can have a look at the technical details of this beautiful little beast, which nowadays is no longer in use. Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers, manually translated into English, but, but, dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video. Let's start with the fuselage. It featured a revolutionary aerodynamic design that could slice through the air with extreme efficiency. Its advanced delta wing design, along with its sleek streamlined profile, effectively minimized air resistance, optimizing lift and performance at high velocities. Its slim wings and its engines, which were at an angle to the fuselage, were designed to boost high altitude performance, particularly at supersonic speeds. If we move on to the nose of the plane, we'll notice its extremely particular shape, including these distinctive protuberances known as Chinese running along the fuselage. These are actually specifically designed to create vortices, which effectively reduce the pressure on the wings, thereby boosting lift by 20%. Basically, everything about this plane was designed to make it go fast. A key feature of the SR-71 was its ability to manage the extremely high temperatures generated by flying at high speed. In parts of the fuselage, temperatures of up to 370 degrees Celsius could be reached. The plane was able to resist these extremely high temperatures because it was made out of titanium. The cockpit was designed to fit two crew members, the pilot who was seated in the front seat and the so-called RIO, that is to say, the radar intercept officer, who was positioned in the back seat. To deal with the high altitudes, pilots were outfitted with pressurized flight suits specially designed for supersonic flight in the stratosphere. But wait, there's more. The SR-71 was also a stealth plane, meaning that it could hide from enemy radar systems. And how did it manage to do that? To minimize radar visibility, the plane's shape was of a truly particular design and it was covered in special materials that could either deflect or absorb radar waves effectively. These features, combined with the incredible speeds and altitudes it could reach, made the Blackbird one of the most advanced and effective reconnaissance aircraft of its era. Now, let's move on to its incredibly powerful engines. The SR-71 Blackbird stands out for its groundbreaking propulsion system, the success of which is thanks to its Pratt and Whitney J58 jet engines with their innovative inlet spikes, crucial to the aircraft's supersonic performance. The J58 engines, which are truly gigantic jet engines, work just like any other jet engine. The difference lies in their size. The Blackbird's two engines powered the aircraft to a top speed of Mach 3.2. That's 3.2 times the speed of sound, equivalent to about 3,540.6 kilometers per hour, and propelled it to an altitude of 85,000 feet, which is about 25 kilometers. To deal with these extremely high speeds, since the aerodynamic forces were causing a series of hard-to-manage issues, a cone, called a spike, was installed in front of the engine air intakes. This system was employed to slow down the air entering the engines, effectively slowing it from supersonic to subsonic speeds, which was crucial for the fuel combustion process. And now, let's move on to the special fuel that was used, JP-7. To deal with the needs of the SR-71's extremely powerful engines, the plane had huge tanks that could hold over 40,000 liters of a special kind of fuel called JP-7, which was specifically developed for the extreme operating conditions. The SR-71 structure, as we've previously mentioned, would heat up to about 370 degrees Celsius during flight, obviously at top speed, so the fuselage panels were actually specifically designed to expand with the intense heat. 
This particular feature, although necessary, meant that there would be fuel leaks when the aircraft was on the ground and relatively cold, and this was especially the case during the takeoff phase. To overcome the risk of the fuel catching fire on its own due to the extremely high temperatures of the fuselage, they used triethylborane or TEB, an additive that spontaneously combusts when it comes into contact with the air. The TEB essentially acted as a trigger for the combustion of the fuel igniting the JP7. The injection of TB would kick off the combustion process and get this, the injection of TB was also what created that iconic green flame at takeoff. Now let's talk about the control surfaces and the landing gear. The control surfaces of the Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird, its elevons and rudders, played a crucial role in its agility at supersonic speeds. The elevons, located on the trailing edge of the plane's delta wings, were responsible for both rolling and pitching maneuvers, moving together to tilt the aircraft or in opposite directions to initiate a roll. A mechanical device called a mixer, located in the tail section, received the pilot's commands and facilitated a smooth transition between rolling and pitching for more complex maneuvers. The plane was equipped with a truly one-of-a-kind landing gear system, featuring a steerable front wheel and two rear wheel structures with special aluminum nitride tires. And get this, these were filled with nitrogen so that they would be able to withstand the high temperatures. During landing, a large drag chute would drastically slow the aircraft down, effectively easing the load on the landing gear and ensuring that the Blackbird's missions were always safe and efficient. So, let's move on to the reconnaissance gear. The SR-71 was equipped with advanced reconnaissance technology. It was in fact truly one of a kind thanks to its interchangeable nose, which could accommodate a variety of instruments including radars and an aerial strip camera that could hold up to 3,200 meters of film. This sophisticated equipment could capture high-resolution images even from a height of 80,000 feet, so it was able to provide extensive and detailed surveillance coverage. In addition, its astro-inertial navigation system, some real high-tech jargon for you there, otherwise known as ANS, provided an accurate location using the position of the stars, which was a real innovation well before the GPS era. I mean, this plane, when you look at it, it's like it came straight out of a Star Wars movie, but yes, from an engineering and aerodynamic standpoint, it's completely nuts. Guys, I really want to give another shout-out to Jacob O'Neill to thank him for allowing us to use his absolutely phenomenal 3D animations. There's some truly insane work behind them. And of course, a big thanks to all of you as well for sticking with us till the very end. Catch you next time, right here on Geopop, Everyday Science.